Hello and welcome to The Tech Show. What have we got coming up this week? Oh, we've got all sorts of stuff, starting with a gravel bike <laughs> from Santa Cruz. <laughs> well, I think it looks good. We've also got some new tall wraps and some pumps to look at. And most importantly, we've got the only world champs you actually need to know about, the boxer world champs. Oh. Okay, so straight into the show, and of course, we've just had the Mountain Bike World Championships, and every year at the World Championships, there's also the Boxer World Champs, which has always been a bit of a highlight, to be fair. And it's actually quite a ridiculous event. So it is fueled by the post-party atmosphere. There's loads of beer flowing and stuff. And they take the world's best mechanics of boxer racing athletes, and they basically have to strip down a set of boxers. They have to reinflate to a certain air pressure. They have to take the oil out. They have to reinflate. Um, put the oil back in the damper, rebuild, lower leg, oil seals out, seals back in, etc. Uh, and then chug a beer at the end of it. And then it goes through a whole system to work, work your way through to the final. So in the irony being, at the end, you, you know, you're like, what, 10 beers deep or something, and you've got to do an entire box of rebuild in a time that it probably takes us to swap a tire or something like that. <laughs> um, it is, is absolutely mad. And this is some footage from this year's World Champs. So it's all going off at the Rock Shocks uh, booth, stand. Um, they're going to have the box of World Champs. It's a bit of tradition for, well, as long as there's been World Champs. So all the SRAM race mechanics uh, across loads of teams get invited, or the best ones, uh, and they just have to do a race. There's drinking involved, it's wild. Let's watch. We win, we win the other match. Boxer World Champions for 2023. Well, I'll be using the new 2024 Boxer Ultimate. Start the event with a shot of whiskey. So uh, the first round will start a shot of whiskey. Prizes, the winner will take home 500. We're heading into round two. We've got four mechanics left. Do this, put your hands on the table. One, two, three, go! There you go. Go on, boys! There you go. Nice, Aaron. Sir Clip on the bottom. Make sure, at home, make sure you got all the air out of your fork before you do this. Nice, Sir Clip. We lost the part down here, too. Just heading into finals, we've got Daniel from Trek Factory Racing. <laughs> we've also got Lewis from uh, Norco Factory Racing. So we've got a Brit versus a Scotch person. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> And it looks like he's ahead, he's got small advantage here. And it's first try. This is on the This is on the field. Let's go! 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 Let's go!
Hello. Wow, that was just wild. Uh, I've never seen boxers service that quickly. Potentially, I wouldn't necessarily ride them, but yeah, Daniel from Trek, aka Roy D, aka Grandad's old mechanic, he just smashed it. He's amazing. He's the best boxer mechanic in the world. He's a world champ. I think it's so cool that they do something for the mechanics, actually, because they're kind of the unsung heroes, yeah, aren't definitely. they? And it's like the after party before the after party, the pre after party. It's I the know, one that counts, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And they actually do get a prize for it. So uh, hats off to uh, Lewis Kirkwood and Daniel Bladen for getting it through to the semi-finals and then Daniel Bladen uh, taking the win there for Britain. So another British win I at know. the World I Championship so another downhill. another gold for the Brits. Uh, yeah, awesome, and he's a mechanic for Trek Factory Racing. So doth my hat to you, sir. And I've got to say, I was confused in watching some of this. I know we had yeah. this a bit because of all the jerseys, you kind of forget who, <laughs> but they're riding, they're wrapping their riders' jerseys and stuff. So he's wearing, I think he's wearing Vosjet's jersey or something, wasn't Yeah, he? and then the Scottish rider was in a kilt with a Canadian shirt, but yeah. he was... He, was he, <laughs> he throws your head out, you just got to think of the countries, yeah. basically, at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, mega cool stuff. Well, we've got a bit of show and tell today, haven't we? Because yeah. we've got a new pump from Crank Brothers. This is the Click HV mini floor pump because, well, it is a mini floor pump. So you've got the little valve that's hidden out there and then this sort of bends round and you've got your little kickstand that goes down there. And the coolest feature, which I think we both love, is the fact that it's just magnets on. That's brilliant, doesn't it? yeah. <laughs> the whole purpose being that you can sort of attach it to your valve properly and then get that in there without having to sort of, you know, faff around, I yeah. would say. Um, it's high volume, it goes up to 60 PSI, and that would be selling for 69.99 US dollars, um, as far as I'm aware. Be tempted to get one of those, you know, because I've got an mm. ancient hand-sized version of one of those, and that was great. Yeah. With the little foot edition. That's for big days out and bigger trips, that's a great idea. For sure, especially mm. if you can get it on your bottle cage. It doesn't take up that much room yeah. at all. Nice. What have you got to show um, and tell Okay, those? so we've got the PT's Hold Fast Tool Wrap. Uh, now, you might have seen some shots of me with one of these on a bike, and a few people have asked about it. It was actually one I nicked off the stand at Eurobike oh. um, <laughs> before I realised it wasn't actually on sale yet. So they asked me to not mention it, just carry on using it. So, essentially, they've made a tool wrap with a difference. Now, Bryn actually contacted me ages ago asking, you know, you know, what is it about strapping tools on that's good? What's bad? What do you like? What products out there work? They've genuinely been doing their market research and it's made of two components. This is a cool thing. So you've got the strap, which is a rubber lined strap. So the idea being it won't move on your bike and therefore rub off your paintwork, which is annoying. But the strap actually stays on your bike, which is the coolest thing about it. So you wrap it around the frame. In fact, here's some footage of me at Eurobike giving a demo actually with a frame in there. And the point is that this actually stays on your bike, unlike some of them that you have to take it off and then faff wrapping it back on. You can get your tube off, and more importantly, you've got your little pouch, which is made from a really tough weatherproof fabric, and it's got a little waterproof zipper on the inside you can put your car keys in. And it's big enough, I mean, on screen, again, there's some more shots of what I carry in mine, big enough for some sweets, CO2 cartridge, tire repair kit, and a multi tool. Straight to sweets there. Oh, you've got to have some like, emergency <laughs> cola bottles, the cheaper and gummier the better. But what I liked is the fact that you could actually leave that on there yeah. and then have your tool wrap just kind of uh, there, collecting all the valves work, and work stuff. Off it. Yeah, 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 like yes. a little. It's Work great. Station. So yeah, I mean, you can obviously just use it to hold a, a tube as well if you don't need to run both options on there. Uh, it's a great piece of kit and retailing for thirty four ninety nine mm. right now. I think it's, they're awesome. It's surprising when something just comes out and it just like you're like, why haven't we thought about that before? That actually yeah, works. Yeah, it just really addresses well. some of those problems. I mean. I've used one, I can't remember what brand it was, way back, and it did actually rub all the paintwork a bit oh. dull, <laughs> and it just annoyed me, so I never went back to using tube straps ever again. Oh, nice. So I think that's a good idea. Uh, so Santa Cruz have brought out a new Stigmata. So this is a gravel bike, so for all you gravel haters out there, skip right now. Um, but they've basically made it for mountain bikers. It is longer and slacker, as you would expect. And as with all of the new Santa Cruz models that we've been seeing this year with the updates, you get that nice little glove box which you like with the tall wrap I can't remember what the tall wrap's called but you get a glove box 
socks, you get UDH, threaded bottom bracket, um, and there's no headset routing in this frame intentionally. They've done this on purpose because they recognize that gravel riders do do multiple disciplines. Uh, you might be going fast, you might be going far, therefore you might be changing the stack on your um, stem. So they wanted it to be easy. Um, and you can have, it's gonna be a 700C uh, wheels and you can fit up to 50 millimeter tires in there. So pretty chunky. Um, and you can have it in rigid with no dropper post or you can have it with 40 mil uh, suspension forks with a dropper post if that is your flavor. Um, and we're looking at 3,899 with SRAM Apex 11 speed electronic gears there. Um, and it's looking at around about the nine kilo mark as well. So looking pretty good. Hate to say it. It does. It does look quite it's good. Look really good. But, but Santa Cruz bug me with that. They're another. They just make cool I stuff. I know, and I don't know what it is about this sort of clay colour. Can't it's argue with it. It's sort of almost a nod to. Well, Keegan Swenson actually just rode it to victory in the 200 mile Unbound, so maybe it was a nod to that. Who knows? Mm. Looking good anyway. Not bad. Since it's just been the World Champs and the Boxer World Champs and the new Boxer has been released, it's a Boxer related quiz this week. So three Boxer related questions coming at you on screen. First of which, in 1997, RockShox released an alternative to the Boxer that couldn't, the Boxer basically couldn't buy it yet. So the public were like, we need something as well. So what was it called? Oh, I don't know that. Over the years, the RockShox Boxer has used four different stanchion coatings uh, other than the regular anodized. Can you name them all? Oh, I know one. <laughs> I've got my nerd specs on for that one. Yeah. And um, who was the first rider to win a world champion title in the men's category on a pair of boxers? Mm, and what year as well? I may as well put that one in. Answers coming up later. Okay, it's comments time. And last week, me and Neil were talking about iconic bikes ahead uh, of the world champs. Nice. And um, so, yeah, we've got a few people who chimed in with their iconic bikes or some of the ones we missed. And Harvey Jones Woodsman says, a Zonic Eliminator DH oh, frame yes. was the most iconic to me. I love that bike, uh, but way out of my budget for me in them days. Um, uh, but he did find a Trek Diesel DH. Oh, well, they're, they're both. That's Pretty iconic. Rocking horse turn, I, I would think. say. I would say. So shout out to Spencer, who's actually sent us in a little video of him still riding an Azonic Eliminator, yeah. although having some trouble on the ice in Utah here. Um, and also Graham um, sent us in his Trek Diesel, just so you can see what a Trek Diesel looks like. Yeah. And I think that's pretty iconic looking, to yeah. be fair. Yeah, um, over in Nottinghamshire. I am. Um Fond memories of the Eliminator. I used to have the recoil, I had three of them back in the magazine days. <laughs> very, very similar, yeah, cool bike. Uh, next from Floyd Blanston. My favorite downhill frame is the Burner by Turner Bikes. Um, put together way back when 80 mil was the standard, yep. Yeah, and Kona basically copied that uh, mm. with the stab design. In fact, Kona to start with actually used the Turner Burner frame with Kona stickers on it and their racers, Tommy, Tommy Misser and his brother, Power Misser. Uh, they both raced it basically and then Kona released the stab which lost the horse link and had single pivot version uh, mm. but this one's from samantha in swindon which is Kona stab um oh yeah and the dope arm system there we go there's yeah. a thing to talk about i forgot you put that in there <laughs> yeah so um one of the downsides of having a single pivot against a horse of course is the effect of braking basically uh, anti-rise on, on um on your wrist suspension, firming up suspension, giving you brake jack or brake squat. So a lot of people, including Kona, used to have the, the torsion arm on there. So basically would cancel the effects out and they called it the dope arm system. I can't remember what it stood for though. Oh, it stood for but something. It did. Mm. Yeah, not just dope because <laughs> well, Kona loves dope. smoking dope. It was, <laughs> I think they <laughs> Didn't you say um, someone rode that? Who was that? Fabian um, Morel. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, he famously modified all his Kona race bikes. Yeah. Um, used to cut and shut them to do different things with his mechanic, Paul Walton. And they also mounted, he had different positions for his one, uh, the dope arm that is. So on a normal bike that had a dope arm or something like that, a torsion arm, the idea was to make the braking neutral, so it mm. just didn't affect the rear end. But he did, he had his setup, basically so you could run it higher and the effect would be to squat the rear end down. So although that sounds weird because it firm your suspension up and wouldn't be as active, 
he used it basically to balance the chassis when he was racing to keep the front end up. Mm. Like kind of pretty advanced Yeah, but stuff. also it would sort of dig in as well yeah. and give you, you more traction to get the in the rear. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Mm. I And I think the whole floating rotor thing, the, sorry, the floating uh, brake mount thing is still kind of kicking around. I feel like it's kind Danny of having Hart's a bit of a resurgence. Yeah. I feel like even Danny might even have something on his cube at the moment. I saw a big like metal piece. A plate down by his dropout. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, might be playing around with something. Um, anyway, so Jeff um, Dickinson says, in 99, British rider Paul Lasonby oh, became the first person ever to legend, win a national cross-country title house, on yeah. a full suspension bike. It was a Marin Mount Vision. It was yeah, indeed. Yeah, I mean, I've got, uh, we've actually managed to find an early uh, Marin, thanks to Dave here, who actually purchased um, this showroom Marin from Maverick, as in oh, nice. the people who made the forks. Yeah. Um, and they're pretty iconic to me, actually. I always wanted a pair of those upside down Maverick forks. They you know, just look so good. You know, with the dual crown. Designed by Paul Turner, who, who designed the RockShox. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and should also, quiz even. <laughs> it should have been the quiz. So many quizzes. Um, and also, we've got one here from Cameron uh, in Glentress, who's. It's not one of the earlier Marins, but I still think that this later Marin Mount Vision is still quite an iconic shape with that kind of like. Uh, back end, it's sort of got orange like vibes almost, yeah. isn't it? Like yeah, modern orange vibes. But yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so Pooey yeah. Cheeks <laughs> says also Jason McCroy specialised S Works, a non downhill icon for sure. I mean, it yeah. is. It is for uh, sure. Here's a shot of it here that I took oh. at Malvern's a few years ago. Nice. Yeah, that bike Thank brings you. back so many memories for me. And yeah. I'm sure it will do for a lot of people as well. That was the first suspension bike. In, I think the video was dirt. We could actually see the rear end track in the ground, and it's been like, oh my god, it actually works. It's amazing. Because <laughs> before that, you just never really knew if they didn't, and other than cost loads of money and weighed loads. Yeah. It's the yeah, first yeah. one you could actively see it moving. Awesome stuff. Um, KPV says the Honda Downer bike was iconic for me, and um, part of the mystery of what was lurking inside. You do know that was just yes. basically a chain cassette in a box. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really cool approach. The mystery's been revealed. Because yeah, everyone's yeah. like, it has to be a gearbox. And it's like, well, gearboxes have friction, chain cassettes have less. But they mid mounted it. Still iconic, still oh, looking like yeah. a Honda motorbike yeah. somehow on hey, that downhill. If you like that, look up Trinity MTB. They've kind of had a modern approach to that and they've done a very similar thing. Uh, some Australian guys, very cool stuff. There'll be a link somewhere floating around. If you like the Honda, you'll love this. Nice, and a final one in from Raphael uh, Gaudet. Sorry, I probably pronounced that wrong. <laughs> Who says, Sam Hill's green iron horse is legendary. I agree. Jack, you said that when we started doing this subject last year. Cameraman Jack agrees with you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's rewind time, and seeing as we've created a bit of a boxer theme for this show, oh, I thought yeah. I'd continue it, and yeah. I'd take you through the years of some of our uh, boxer uploads. And so my Nothing first one... <laughs> My first one is from Phil. It's his 1997 oh, yes. Marin DH FRS from Staffordshire in the UK. Check that out. Nice pair of boxer that's pros pretty, on there. Actually, that's a pretty Ooh. iconic bike itself, isn't it? I mean, the it's shape a, as it's well. A, it's a, it's a Marin DHFRS, but that's not the original back end, is it? Oh. So you've either painted it from orange to red because you broke it, because they definitely didn't break all the time <laughs> back then, or you've taken one off a of B17. Uh, but either there. way, it matches the fork, so it looks sick. <laughs> <laughs> and then it. moving through to potentially 90s, well, mid 90s, is Darren's uh, Yeti Lawwell. Oh, uh, Darren Tap. Which I he know this bike. is in Northern Ireland and yeah. he has been on a mission. He's spent about four years trying to source this law wheel because he used to race it used back in the it, 90s yeah. and now he's doing it up. And we can see Fat Creations have done an incredible job of repainting it all. Oh, and it's it beautiful with that. Not a boxer done. pro on there. In the fact, pool shock as well. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Which I think he had a bit of a nightmare sourcing parts and stuff for yeah me. no doubt but yeah anyway yeah. he i don't know it's probably built by now because he did send this into us about a year or two ago yeah. tappy if it's built send us some shots yes. we'd love to see it dude please um and then moving on to 98 from new zealand we've got a foes weasel oh yes what are you this saying is a great bike i am <laughs> just opening that picture so it, was a, it was a long travel bike basically yeah that was kind of ahead of its time really the yeah weasel world accounts uh, but this one's seriously souped up. That looks like a three-inch Gazzalotti front tyre to me, for anyone <laughs> that remembers those. 
Look at the size. back end on that thing. Yeah. That would be an interesting ride. Um, and then moving into the early noughties, we have a 2001 Mountain Cycle San Andreas. What are you saying? Because this is an unusual looking the bike. The San Andreas, the original one, was I think <laughs> probably one of my favorite bikes of all time. I know I said really? about a lot of bikes, but given how advanced it was when it first came out with the inverted fork, the floating disc brakes, all that stuff. And this is just a slightly more modernized version, the DHS. So it's put a longer travel fork in it, a longer shock is a bit bumped up, but it's still the same monocoque frame design. Yeah, I don't know if that's a slightly modern boxer it, um, or yeah. not, but is 2001 the sort of era we started to move up to 200 mils? The I feel like that four inches of With the graphic on was about 2007, I think. Mm. But, um, but, but yeah, so, so cool to see the frame as well. Still looking good. Um, mm. Something that I think looks a little more dated though, moving on to a Cove Shocker oh, from uh, yeah. Nick in Woburn. Um, he's not given us a year, but I'm saying this is like what, mid, mid, it's like 2005-ish yeah. maybe, potentially. Hard to tell with that fork as well. But it does look It's not very, far off that era as well. To me, that looks very mid noughties Like, yeah. to me, that is a classic shot right there, those, that bike. To be fair, there's probably loads of those still left because they were so flipping bomb-proof <laughs> yeah. when they were out. A friend of mine, Cal, he worked for Evil for a while. I don't know what he's doing now, but he had one of these when he lived in Whistler and he just could not break the thing. I think he's still riding for Evil, actually. Um, and then on to the 2010s, we've got this Rocky Mountain from David in New Hampshire in the USA. Nice. Um, and looking slightly more modern. Is that a flat line? That, I think it is, the frame. Oh. If it is, that's the frame that uh, did this to my wrist. I had a massive crash following Ew, the guy. It made a and noise. I snapped my wrist and broke all the tendons <laughs> in it and never really got fixed that well. <laughs> that's why I have to wrist things sometimes. Uh, so, yeah. And then bringing us up to. That, well, I didn't do anything that more was modern awesome. than that, but it's This is nice like a show custom made for me. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Thank you. And don't forget to send us in any of your rewinds, top mods if you built anything up or modded anything. Um, and obviously, Bike Cave. I love the Bike Caves. You love the rewinds, don't you? I like a Bike Cave too, to be fair. I'm about <laughs> to redo mine, so I need, I need some inspiration. Get involved. <laughs> Okay, now we've got some quiz answers to finish up this week's show. Um, I'll dive in with the first one, shall I? Of course, yeah. Uh, so, in 97, Rockshots released an alternative to the Boxer that you couldn't actually buy. Anyone know what that was called? Oh, it was the Judy DHO, which stood for downhill only, because the Judy, of course, was, uh, what, 75 or 80 mil travel single crown fork. And when they released the Boxer, it started doing so well in the World Cup scene, it was almost a bit unfair for people that couldn't get the fork. So they were like, quick, let's make a twin crown version of the DHO, of the Judy. Uh, I think it had 100 mil travel, but as far as I remember, you could get custom kits to even bump up the travel. And it kind of looked just like a boxer. It just wasn't as big or as good. Hmm, I had a set of Judy's on my first Kona Noonan, hmm. my first mountain bike, and they were like a set of pogo sticks. But, uh, <laughs> you know, times have moved on. Um, over the years, RockShox boxers have used four different stanchion coatings. I actually did know two of these and I'd forgotten. Um, can you name all four? So we had titanium nitride, which was gold in 2001. We had slippery silver uh, round about For a few 2003. Years as well, course, yeah, yeah, I did remember that one. Uh, DLC, the diamond light coating, which was black, uh, round about 2008. And then of course, to the present day from 2014, was the fast black, obviously. Yeah, you should absolutely, know yeah. Uh, and the last question was, who was the first male rider to win a world champion title on boxer? Nicolas Foulet, of course, the French man. Mm. Um, and he did that in 1996 at Cairns in Australia beating Palmer by something like 0.15 of a second, I think it was. So an absolutely crazy, and Palmer was also on a pair of the prototype 1996 boxers. What a legend. Well, thanks for joining us this week. And if you want to continue the debate down in the comments below, uh, let us know what you think about the um, the new boxes, the old boxes. Did you have a set of boxes? What was your favorite set, favorite coating maybe? And uh, what do you think about the old Boxer World Championships? Was it more inaugural than <laughs> the downhill race? <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon. ta -ra.